Canto 2, Chapter Number 10. Bhagavatam is the answer to all questions. Text Number 18. Yeah. 
Swami is explaining to Maharaj Parikshit about the process of creation. When he is explaining about the gradual evolution of the different sense organs and sense activities. And there's a gradual process of the development of the, the, the body of the Virata Purush. Right? The Virata Purush is the sum total of all the living entities. It means all the different living entities, all their different organs and senses, everything are all there within this one form of the Virata Purush. So there, we explained yesterday there are five elements, basic elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And these different elements uh, are connected to a particular organ of our bodies. Just like the finest element is ether. Right? So within ether there is only one uh, there is only one uh, sense object, there's only sound. And in order to detect sound, we have to have ears. We don't, we cannot perceive sound with our tongue or with our skin. Sound is only perceived through the ear. And there's a controlling deity also for the ear. There's a controlling deity. Right? There's three hundred there are thirty three three hundred and thirty million deities. And each of these deities have some function over the different actions of our sense organs. Just like it's described here, that there's a deity Varuna who is responsible for the taste. It, it is through the power of Varuna that we pers our tongue can perceive different tastes. Lord Balaram, it said one of Lord Balaram's two wives, one wife is Varuni. Lord Balaram is very fond of honey. So Varuni is a controlling, Varuna is a, usually we hear about Varuna that he's the god of the ocean. But here it's described how Varuna is actually responsible for the perceiving different tastes. So, sound is perceived by the ear. And it, sound is only there in the ether. And then the next element is air. And with air, we can perceive touch. Right? When you put on the electric fans or when you turn on the air conditioning, we can we feel the, the, the air. 
。呃，像是我们打开空调或者风扇的时候，我们可以感受到这个空气的流动。Or you go outside and there's some breeze, you can feel the wind. 或者当我们走到外面，可以感受到这种微风的吹拂。And we can perceive also sometimes the heat of the the how warm it is through the air. 有的时候我们通过空气的流动，也可以感受到环境中的热度。And that perception of the air that is through the skin. Uh, this kind of air perception, we are through the skin. And so our skin perceives the the, the touch. So our skin is feeling the touch. And then after air, then the next element is fire. Uh, air after the next element is fire. And fire will have a form. Uh, fire has a form. Right. So you can have little candle lights, the light from the candle to a small light, but you can have a big blazing fire. Oh, 比如说我们点上蜡烛的时候，可能有小小的火焰，这个小小的火焰也可以是很大的火焰。And so fire takes on different forms, and these forms are seen by our eyes. 所以火元素它可以产生出不同的形象，这些形象是由我们的眼睛来体验的。And there's a controlling deity for the eyes also. And then next element after fire, then we have water. And we know water has a taste. And here we're hearing about the taste and we're told the deity in charge of the taste, this is Varuna. 呃，在这个地方，我们就听到去掌控我们的味觉，或者说品味的神明是吧 ，Luna？ And taste is perceived through the tongue. 呃，然后味觉是由我们的舌头感知的。Right, our skin cannot perceive the taste. 我们的皮肤不能够去产生味觉。And just by hearing or looking, we don't know what is the taste. 仅仅通过聆听或者观看，我我们也没有办法产生味觉。We often say. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Ah, we often say, "Ah, want to prove this pudding's flavor, we need to use our tongue." Somebody has cooked a nice cake. It may look very nice, but we have to taste it to know if it's really good or not. Someone has made a nice cake. It may look very nice, but we have to taste it to know if it's really good or not. Someone has made a nice cake. It may look very nice, but we have to taste it to know if it's really good or not. Someone has made a nice cake. It may look very nice, but we have to And he saw there was a big plate of fruit in front of the house. And he saw these big apples, and the monkey thought, "Oh, I'm going to have a feast today." 就像一只猴子来到房子之前，他看到这个盘子上有很多水果，呃，很大的苹果。猴子想，今天我可要呃大饱饱餐一顿了。And the monkey climbed over into the garden and took one of these apples from the plate. But when he went to bite it, it was it was like rock. It was actually a wooden apple. And it had it looked just like the real apple. The monkey had the apple and he could not eat it. 呃，猴子手里拿着苹果，却吃不动它。He was so attached. He was holding the apple in his hand. 但是他很依附，就拿着这个苹果紧紧不放。But he could not taste the apple. 但是他尝不到苹果的味道。And then he came along the road, and then he saw there was a tree full of many apples. 然后他就来到了路上，看到旁边树上结满了苹果。But he was thinking, no, I have an apple. I have my apple. 但是他看着手里的苹果，想我手里攥着一个苹果，我是有苹果的。He didn't want to let go of the, the wooden apple to get the real apple. 他不想放下这个木头做的苹果，去获得真正的苹果。So、material life is like that. 物质生活也像这样。We hold on to the illusion. We want to enjoy the illusion, but to, in, in order to experience the reality, we have to let go of the illusion. 呃，我们依附或者抓取的只是一种幻觉。如果我们想要去体验真理的话，我们要放下对于幻觉的这种依附。And、so our senses are given to us to perceive different actions. 所以我们拥有感官去获得不同的体验。Right, with the 
with the tongue we can taste water. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Rasoham Apsukonti Ah, I am the taste in water. The active principle in everything is Lord Sri Krishna. But Lord Krishna delegates his different demigods, he gives them each some responsibility. Krishna doesn't do everything himself, he delegates the responsibility. Prabhupada delegated all responsibilities to run the society. He didn't, Prabhupada didn't have hands on everything, controlling everything. He, he let the devotees manage. Of course, sometimes Prabhupada would point out faults, some things he didn't like. And so he would tell them that if something was not right, he would let the devotees know, he would guide them. But generally he gave the devotees that independence. And he said, you make the money, you should, you should can decide how you want to spend it. But Prabhupada didn't like to see devotees waste money. There was one devotee one time, he was in charge of the temple and Prabhupada told him, he said, you spend money like a rich man's son. Right? If your father is a rich man, then you enjoy spending your father's money. So Prabhupada told this one devotee who was running the temple, he said, you spend money like a rich man's son. In other words, Prabhupada was telling him is that you spend money very freely, you don't care, you don't seem to value the money. Yeah, if, if your father is a rich man, you know, you just spend his money, you know, you, you, do, you don't worry about weight making money, you think, my father's rich, I can spend. But if you work yourself to get money, your father had no money, and you work yourself to get money, then you value the money much more. So you want to know the real value of money, then you make it make the money yourself, then you value it more. So anyway, Lord Krishna delegates responsibilities to the administrative demigods to oversee the affairs of the material creation. And we have Varuna in charge of the taste which is perceived through the tongue. And then the final element is air. And air has the, the, the fragrance of the air, the aroma of the air. The original fragrance of the air, right? And how do we perceive the aroma? By the nose. The tongue cannot perceive the, the smell. The eyes, the skin, they cannot know what is the smell. 
It is simply the nose which can perceive. And it's not just simply the nose itself, but it's the, the living force which is there within each of these sense organs. Just like a dead person, the nose is still there, but he cannot smell anything. The soul is gone, so there's no consciousness, there's no life in the body. The organs are there, the nose is there, the tongue is there, but they cannot do anything. Because the soul has gone and that, that soul is the living force in the body. And Prabhupada talks how woman may be very beautiful, but if she's dead, who wants to impress the, the dead woman? So the beauty is not in the body, the beauty is actually in the soul. But out of illusion, people are attracted by the body. We want to understand properly what is the nature of the material body. And we know in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the body to be just like a dress. Right. Just like we give up the old dress, we will put on the new dress. In the same way we give up the old body, we take a new body. So the body is like a dress. Just as the dress does not have any consciousness, the body itself is also not conscious. But it is the soul which enters in to the body, which gives it life. And because the soul is there in the body, so the different sense organs can all function. We can perceive smell and taste and form and touch. All the different sense objects come about because the soul is there in the body. But without the soul, there is no, there is no one cannot understand anything. So in this way we're hearing about the development, the evolution of the universal body. Mm. Alright, are there any questions? Any um, in this Vedanta Purusha, I'm saying at the universal body, Krishna should do Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. Yes. Well, the, the, what Krishna showed to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, that was a special universal form. That was like Kala Rup, the form of time, where you could see all of the different soldiers that were all going to die. But Shri Prabhupada explains this Virata Purush, he said this is the 
the, the sum total of all living entities. Meaning all the different living entities that are all there, all the different organs and senses and bodies that are all there within that form of the Virata Purusha. The Virata Purusha is a total kind of everything together, all the different living entities like the Brahman, Chatri, Vaishya Sudra, they're all there in the universal form. And we hear like the suns, like the eyes of the universal form. And mountains and rivers are like the veins in the universal form. Mountains are like the bones in the body of the universal form. And we have the different planetary systems. The upper planets are like the top, the head of the body of the Virata. The top, the heavenly planets, the upper planets represent the, the top, the upper part of the body of the universal form. And the lower planetary systems like Sutala Loka, Patala Loka, Mahalo, these lower planets, they are all representing the feet and the legs of the Virata so everything which is there in the cosmic manifestation and all living entities is all there within the Virata And we are hearing how there's a, a gradual evolution of the different senses from this Virata group. You can see the systematic development of the different organs. Management means to engage other people, get other people, give people responsibility, and let them do things. So, Lord Krishna is a he's the universal manager. There's a hierarchy. You can see in the universe there's a hierarchy. There's administrative demigods. Uh, 
we're thinking, we're managing, we're thinking, we're controlling, but we're all controlled. We're under the control of these different demigods. So we have to also offer our, we also offer our respects to these demigods. And we understand they're also doing their service on behalf of the Supreme Lord. So if you're managing a group, you definitely want to be able to engage other people. And that way other people will feel appreciated, they'll feel valuable. But if, if you just leave it, if you just have to think, oh well, you're in charge, you do it. And then, you know, then that's not that's not a, a good mood. You've got to create a team. You've got to get a team together. You've got to get people who, who work together and everyone will take some responsibility. And then when you have a team together, then you can do things. So Prabhupada, when he went to America, he was concerned to get people to immediately engage people and make them feel responsible. When he went to America, he registered his society and he put different people and, you know, made them feel, you're, mem you're one of the members, you're one of the uh, members of the founding members of the society. They were totally new people. They didn't know anything. But Prabhupada wanted to engage them. He wanted them to feel responsible and get connected. And so, Krishna consciousness is, is just like everything else in any other organization. They, 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 they will want to create that mode, that cooperation where people want to dedicate themselves to, to, the, to the company or to the organization. So today, of course, is the disappearance day of uh, His Divine Grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Prabhupada. So, uh, we'll, uh, 11. at 11 o'clock, we'll meet here and, and we'll speak about the life and the, the activities. Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. You can hear about his pastimes, how he established the Gaudiya Math. He established the Gaudiya Math to spread the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And how he met our own founder Acharya, Bhakti Vidanta Swami Prabhupada. And how he engaged him in Krishna's service. Uh,
question? Yes, turn mine. So if he plays, um, the number of devotees is not so many. Uh, during some of the festival, like some of the festivals, uh, for example, we have to make gardens for the parampara, Malgini Prasadam, but because of the limitation of the number of people, can we make it more simple? Um, like, for example, not making so many gardens, less gardens, she didn't say, very well, of course, everything you have to consider everything. How much ability you have, how many people you have, how much funds you have. Uh, you know, you're up and don't don't bathe. You're up in hard and you know to buy flowers in the winter time. You know, it can be very expensive. I know Kavi Chandra Swami always tells me about Japan. He said in Japan to buy a, one flower, they're so expensive, it's just unbelievable. I remember when I joined the movement in London, you know, in London also flowers are very expensive. And so we wouldn't offer flowers, we would just offer one petal. Let me go and go and petal. So you, you have to consider everything according to the time and the place and the circumstances. You know, here in Malaysia, you can just walk around and you can pick flowers off the trees everywhere, you know. Sometimes the devotees will also go, there's a mountain area, uh, Cameron Highlands, and they have a big row of flowers there, and the devotees will go there. When they have a big festival, the devotees will go there and they'll get flowers donated from the people there. But, you know, if you go to Hong Kong, you know, nobody will give you anything. <laughs> <laughs> flowers are very expensive. It's Hong Kong. There's no flowers growing anywhere. <laughs> Just buildings. <laughs> and so you have to consider the place that what you can do. So you're in Nan Nancha or somewhere? You know? Nancha. 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 Yeah. Not many people. So, yeah, a simple program. But what's important is the, mo the devotion. It's the mood. It's not the the flowers and fruits, but it's the word, the devotion which is appreciated. Lord Krishna has many flowers and fruits in Goloka. And he has many goddesses of fortune there all serving him. So he's not anxious to get flowers and fruits, but he, he wants the devotion. 
所以他并不焦虑去获得鲜花或者水果，而是想要获得你的富养。But at the same time, you know, we shouldn't think, oh, I'll just get, get devotion, I won't bother to get the flowers. But at the same time, we should not think, oh, I'll just get devotion, I won't bother to get the flowers. Understand that uh, whatever power is there in Sri Prabhupada is coming by the grace of his spiritual master. All right, Prabhupada gives the credit to his spiritual master. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada certainly did great preaching and he was very successful when he was physically present. But the, after his departure, the, follow, the, the, the disciples did not follow all of his instructions. He had instructed them not to put any one person as the acharya. He had instructed them to make a body and to work together and manage everything. But there were two parties, there were two sides. One, one side wanted to do things one way, the other side wanted to do another way. So they fought together, arguments, they went to courts, court battles, they spent a lot of money in the court. And they were all arguing about who should get what property. They say this temple, this land, this is for us, for our society. So they were arguing about the land and the money, but they were not thinking about the preaching. So Srila Prabhupada didn't worry about any land or property, he just put his time and energy into preaching. And in this way he was successful. So he encouraged us to also you know, concentrate on preaching, thinking more about preaching, distributing the message of Lord Chaitanya. Not so much worried about just having temples. 
，而不是只想着如何建构的庙。Books also, Prabhupada put a lot of emphasis on book production. Uh, Prabhupada 也强调了书的印刷生产 But the Gaudiya Mat, after the departure of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, they never really published or printed many books. Uh, 但是对于 Gaudiya Mat 来说，当呃巴比斯坦萨沙提隐寂之后，他们就没有去印刷再多的书了。And so we print a lot of books, and we try to distribute books. So we 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 Okay, Gina, can you ask a question? If we worship Lord Krishna nicely, all the demi gods will bestow their blessings. 如果我们能够很好的崇拜奎沙的话，所有的拜神都会给我们祝福。Right, the demi gods are all the leaves and branches, and Lord Krishna is the root. 啊，所有的拜神，他们就像枝干和树叶一样，而主奎沙是根。So we put the water on the root, and then the whole tree is nourished. 所以我们浇灌的时候会给树根浇水，这样所有的枝叶也都会嗯受到受到滋养。So if we're worshiping Lord Krishna nicely, all the demigods will bestow their blessings on us. 所以如果我们能很好的崇拜主奎沙的话，所有的拜神都会给我们祝福。Yashasti bhakti bhagavati akinchana sevayaganais tatra samasti sura. One who is the devotee of the Lord. Then they will have all the good qualities. So if we have some trouble with our eyes, <laughs> we did something wrong. Maybe our worship is not the And to read the Shrimad Bhagavatam.